Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam and this is going to be SNS 109. So this week, what we got for you this week? I think I got a pretty good mix for you. I got some new tools. Let's see, I went to the flea market last week. I scored a couple things there. I was going to share those with you. Uh, we've got a box down there that's some viewer appreciation mail that came in. So uh, we're going to check that out. And we're going to go through a couple more of our uh, Avon Photo Challenge pictures. We're going to go through there and pick out a couple to share this week. All right. And we've got our mystery tool from last week. I'm going to pull that over here. And uh, we're going to talk about that for just a second also. And then I've got a little bit of machining for you. I had a couple pins to make, like a clevis pin. Just uh, some simple pins, some uh, metric stuff that I did for my friend Joe down at the welding shop. It was a couple pins that he needed for a little job. And uh, I knocked them out this week and I took some video of it. I used a different insert than what I normally use. So we got some good video of that. And uh, I think you guys will enjoy it. So uh, after SNS, and s we've got, we've got some more on the Coat Flex series, boring and broaching. So I've uh, got a couple more of those ready. We're gonna go ahead and get those uploaded and ready for you to watch, all right? And I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and mention this right here. So last week I showed this. This was a uh, mystery tool made and given to me by Mark Bracken and decided to go ahead and uh, just show, share it with you on video to see if any of you guys know what this is. And uh, not really surprising, but in a way I guess I was and Mark was too. Uh, several of you knew what this is, so evidently there's a, there's a few you guys out there watching my channel that know what this is used for. So this is a tool that's used for flint napping, and even myself, I didn't know what flint napping was until Mark told me. So this is a tool that you that you use for uh, scraping the edges. Like uh, he made this for me. This is an example of what you use it for. Okay, he's got this. Uh, <laughs> not stare at case and he's got some of his cards there this is an arrowhead that he made for me and whenever you work the edges of your uh, your your piece here you use a tool like this and he says there's usually a block um, there's one in the picture here in the cards there's a block that goes behind it that backs it up and you go in here and you work it you work those edges because it's like a uh, feels like a serrated knife really and that's the tool that you use and this is one that he builds himself though and he says that he got this idea after watching videos like mine and several of the other YouTube creators out there and he makes it like a collet so unscrew it here okay so all this is is a copper nail <laughs> he cuts the head off of and then he machines all these uh, all this Dell run where it screws together and it's tapered and he's got it split so that once it tightens up it just tightens up on the nail and you can adjust it and uh, compensate for wear and that kind of thing too so let's stick that back in there and I haven't really got to play with the uh, fire piston yet uh, we're gonna do that on another episode that was what else did he give me that he makes as a fire piston so that was the mystery tool and uh, like I said, a bunch of you guys guessed it right. You know what it was. So uh, if you're interested in um, buying any of these, uh, these tools from Mark, flintnappingtools.com is where you need to go. Check out his website, okay? Uh, really nice people. Very, very nice people, him and his wife, Sherry. All right. So we're going to move on. Let's, let's uh, get to some uh, tools and some viewer mail. I haven't showed you any flea market scores in a while and I went last weekend and I picked up a, a, a little batch of tools right here and this all came from the same person as a package deal. Uh, this is a Wilton number 404 C clamp. These are the these are pretty good C clamps right here and it was a little a little crusty so I bead blasted it and uh, dressed some weld spatter off of it and these are just good quality clamps and it's it's always good to have more around here so I mean, you get these for basically like a dollar or two at the flea market. But the rest of this stuff, there's a brand new one and three eighths drill bit right there. And then the rest of them are all 
annular cutters, okay? Um, some of them are the Hogan brand, some are not. But I got a bunch of annular cutters. So like this one here is one and a sixteenth. And they're all brand new. I've got a whole set of them all the way from half inch all the way up to one and five sixteenths. That's the half inch right there. And you could actually put these in a three-quarter collet or a three-quarter inch uh, end mill holder if you have one of those. And they work great for uh, cutting a hole out unlike a drill bit where you're drilling in the center. This basically makes a core in the center of it. And it's, it's great for, um, I mean, really anything, plate steel or especially like thin steel, you know, it kind of works kind of like a hole saw but a lot more efficient and they, they cut really nice so anyway i got a nice big set of them here now you know like i said they're all new there's a whole bunch of them in here all the way up to one and five sixteenths so uh, i haggle with the guy and i finally got them down to ninety dollars for all this and these cutters right here can be quite expensive if you go and buy these things brand new so I think that was a pretty good deal, like I said, with the C-clamp and the uh, 1 and 3 8 drill bit right there, too. So that was last weekend's flea market scores. I don't know how many of you guys are, like, into um, uh, good quality coolers and that kind of stuff. This is a Pelican cooler, which is a, a brand that we sell at work. And Pelican makes some really nice stuff. I'm sure a lot of you know Pelican. They make the... Uh, hard cases of all shapes and sizes for anything basically and good quality stuff you know um, uh, made in USA products the flashlight that I use sometime is a Pelican 26 2630 I think it is but anyway this is a Pelican 65 quart cooler that I'm, I'm basically testing out for myself this is a customer return at work and I'm able to buy it at a pretty good discount off of what they cost new. So I brought it home last week and then I kind of cleaned it up some a little bit. And I got some ice in it Friday. Now today is Wednesday. Just got home from work. It's about 6 o'clock. And I filled it up with two loads of ice. We got these ice machines around here that you can go up and stick your cooler underneath it and uh, get 20 pounds of ice for uh, $1.50 I think it is. So I got two loads. And I'm just testing it, really. And there's still a lot of ice in here. It's, it's definitely melting down. There's a big, big block of it still. So, so that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So it's five days now that that's been in there. And they list this as a, uh, like, we'll hold ice for seven days. And that's under certain circumstances. You can't put this thing out in the sun for seven days and expect it to hold ice. It ain't going to do that. You know, as long as it ain't in direct sunlight, it should hold ice for quite a while. But so this is the first time for me actually testing it out. They come with this really nice seal. It's like, a, you know, it pushes back. It almost looks like a, a cup seal, like in a um, you would find in a hydraulic. So as it pushes down, it, it pushes back and seals it off. So really good quality stuff um, definitely I'm not doing a review on this I'm just trying to show you these are really nice coolers this is all stuff that can be replaced these handles here bolt on all of these latches can be replaced held on by stainless hardware the feet on the bottom there's rubber feet on the bottom those can be replaced these part of the latches so they're a really nice cooler and uh, that's pretty cool to see that this still got some ice and then they they latch shut there you got a place you can lock it and then there's another hole on this side where you can actually attach a cable or something and lock it you hate for somebody to try to take that from you after investing a bunch of money in it but nice stuff so i'm pretty happy with it and uh i think i'm gonna have me a new pelican cooler now so this is this is the uh, group of items that come in this week as uh, viewer appreciation mail. And another really, really fine box of tools right here uh, sent in from another very generous person and a viewer of the channel. And there's some really fine tools right here. You probably see that some of these are Sterrett. Uh, 
really, I was really surprised and blown away whenever I opened this box because I wasn't expecting to see this. He emailed me a few weeks ago about a tap. Uh, but let me back up right here and let, let you know who this is from. So this is from Larry, and I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name properly, Hasenstab or Hasenstab. Um, sorry, Larry. Uh, hopefully one of those is correct. But uh, Larry had had uh, emailed me about a tap, and that's this tap right here, asking me would I have a use for this tap. And I told him that these are the kind of taps you just never know when you're going to need it. They're always handy to have in the bins on the wall, and sometimes you might run into a need for it. So this one is uh, inch and a quarter, 16, okay? It's a good quality tap, and uh, sometimes you need one of those. So I told him that I, I would accept it, and I'd put it in my bin with my other special taps over there. But he decided to go ahead and add some extras in here in the, in the mix, too. So, and he forms me in his letter here. This machinery's handbook is an 11th edition, and this belonged to his dad. And he wanted me to have it. He said that he thought I might like it. Uh, it's dated uh, 1943 inside the book. And he also points out that was made during the time of, like, when my monarch was made, all right, during the World War II. So he's also got some other tools here that he wanted me to have. Uh, this is a set of V-blocks right here that were probably uh, shop-made. And he says he believes these belong to a friend of his dad's. And it has Albright on the uh, stamp there on the side of the, of the V-block. So these must have belonged to somebody by the name of Albright. And very good quality V-blocks right there. Very nice stuff. And they got the little foam, the little foam packages right here that uh, they fit in. And Larry is actually an uh, electrician by trade, so he said he couldn't leave out some of the uh, good quality electrician's tape, so he sent me two rolls of that. And this, this is always handy to have around. I use this stuff quite a bit. All right, so we got the handbook there. And it is kind of, you can see, it's you got to be careful with it. It is uh, well-worn. But you've also got these Starrett tools here. We've got two six-inch scales with the sleeves and they're like brand new okay and then one right here that I really like because I don't have one like this and I've actually been thinking about buying some uh, metric rules or metric scales or like I, I like to call them and this is a 150 millimeter uh, flexible rule made by Starrett and you have uh, 30 seconds 60 fourths on the back side but over here you have the metric Okay, so that's really nice. It doesn't look like it's ever been used or taken out of the toolbox. Uh, Larry did say that this stuff was his and he did, said that he didn't need it anymore so he wanted me to have it. Brand new uh, Jobber's drill gauge. Okay, Starrett. There's a Starrett number 187. There's the drill gauge. And then we have a number 186 drill gauge also by Sterrett. That's brand new and doesn't see any use on it at all. So those are some Primo Sterrett tools right there. And I believe this is, uh, you know, these, these are some newer uh, tools by Sterrett. All right, we got a few more here we'll work through. This is a Michitoya veneer caliper, okay? It goes up to seven inches, and it is a pretty nice quality. I like the uh, the thumb pull right here. If you push it in, it kind of releases it and lets it slide really easy. So it kind of locks it in. All right. It's got the case that it goes in, the holster. This here is a digital caliper by Starrett, a six inch. And this is the number 721. I believe this is their older model, a digital, digital caliper. And it works just fine. And it's in beautiful condition. It doesn't seem like it's got any use on it whatsoever. So that is a nice tool right there. Uh, it says new battery, 1115. So got the book in there. Really, really nice caliper there, Larry. 
And then one last one last tool right here. This is a brown and sharp. It's a test indicator set. The crystal has got a little bit of wear on the face of it there because it seems to be rubbing the wooden box. I can actually see where it's touching the wooden box right there. But it still works fine. Nice big dial to read. Brown and Sharp makes some really nice indicators. So it looks like some of it's missing, but some of it's there. But that's a nice little set, and I, lo I love the box there that it goes in. So what can I say, Larry? I mean, the, you're very generous with all these tools right here. And, you know, I love scales, and that's something that I use every day. And I'm definitely going to be using, I'm going to start using this metric one a lot more right here. And uh, I just really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for thinking about me and, and sending this stuff to me. I'll definitely try to make use of this stuff in the shop. And uh, just thank you very much, okay? I really appreciate it. Okay, we've got three entries that I'm going to go over here for the uh, A-Bomb Photo Challenge. And the very first one, we're going to start with Martin McGinnis, okay? And he's from Spain. And he says in his email here that the mountain behind him is called the Leon Dormito, or in English, the Sleeping Lion. It is situated in a village called Polop in the province of Alicante, about 10 kilometers inland from Benidorm. So cool picture there. Let's zoom in on that. He's got the logo there on the, uh, on the picture. And that does look like a lion there in the, uh, the, <laughs> the mountains. So very interesting. All right, thank you very much, Martin, for your entry. All right, so our next entry, this is from uh, one of our servicemen. Uh, he is in the, he's in the military, and right now he is stationed over in Kosovo. And this is Nate Bird, and he took some fantastic pictures right here, some uh, beautiful backgrounds behind him there with the, the snow-capped mountains. And he really enjoys watching the videos whenever he's over there working uh, he says it really helps pass the time whenever they're whenever they're off duty but he actually does work similar to me whenever he's over here in the states and you know when he's on base working uh, he works around machinery and uh, uses machine tools and does metal working so he's he's in the trade also so that's why he enjoys watching all the videos whenever he's over there on duty so very cool pictures, Nate. I appreciate you sending them in. You're, uh, by the way, I believe you're the only um, service serviceman that's uh, sent me a picture. Somebody that's in the military. I don't think I've got any from uh, anybody else, uh, and, unless they just haven't told me that they were in military. But uh, very cool pictures. I appreciate you sending them in. It's been nice talking to you. Okay. All right. This is going to be our last entry of the week, and these pictures are from. Andreas Ernst and a couple of his friends so they went and visited Dubai back in February and they uh, they took a few pictures they had their A-bomb 79 t-shirts with them so they took a couple pictures so I'm going to go through them here with you and you know he calls this email A-bomb goes Dubai <laughs> February 2016 first picture it says he, he's in front of the oh, I don't even know how to say that uh, Bor I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. You guys know what that is probably. I'll put it on screen so you can see it. Uh, but it's in front of the hotel there. One of the famous hotels. I've seen it on TV and in movies. Okay. In front of the Atlantis, the Palm Hotel on the Palm Jeremiah Island. All right. Skyline of Dubai. And that's, uh, you can see that tall hotel there in the background there. The, is it Bur, Bur, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that word. The last one's Khalifa. I believe I can say that one right. <laughs> so, and then the last one there he sent in, he said, sorry, he's got the wrong shirt on, but that's that uh, world's tallest building that he's standing in front of right there. So. And uh, by the way, they're they're from Germany. They were, and as I said, they were there visiting in Dubai. So, thank you, Andreas, for the pictures. I really appreciate them. 
and uh, that's a cool place. I've seen it in movies here uh, recently. Was it uh, Fast Seven? Fast and Furious Seven was over in Dubai. So pretty cool. Thanks for the pictures, man. Got a little project that I'm going to do today. Uh, today is Sunday. I'm out here in the shop messing around, working on some video stuff, and I've got a little job here that that I decided to help my uh, friend Joe down at the welding shop. This is a a pin that is needed for one of his jobs that he's working on and he asked me could I make two of these this one's pretty well worn out the head on it's busted off and it's got a lot of wear so two simple little pins to make it's very this is very uh, easy straightforward lathe work right here and we got to drill a hole in the end for a cotter pin so this is going to be 18 millimeter the uh, length is uh, 90 millimeters and then the head right here that diameter is going to be a 22 millimeter so we're going to go over to the Victor lathe use a collet chuck I got some one inch cold rolled right here and we'll just turn out a couple of these using this material here so a quick little job for a Sunday first thing I'm going to do is face that end out where it's it's been drilled up in there just a little ways so we're going to clean that up got the end center drilled and what I'm going to do is set my distance here and our length I said was 90 millimeters uh, it's very very close to uh, 3 and 9 sixteenths that's what I was getting at right there so I'm going to hook my tool I'm looking at the bottom edge down here the tool bit of the of the rule the end of the shaft here right on the line so we're going to call that it uh, let me grab one of my mag indicators here all right that's not a critical link you know I even asked him about that it's just a very simple pin that goes through a hole that pins something together so it's off a few thousand, it's not going to kill anything at all. We're going to try this DNMG tool right here. See what it does with a hundred thousandths. Oh, yeah, look at that. Almost bring a tear to your eye, it's so pretty. All right, we're going down to 708, so we got just less than 300 thousandths to come off of it. So we'll just make three cuts here. That's 200 right there. smokage coming up not a bad finish at all we'll probably go ahead and slow our feed rate down and see how we do on a finish we'll just split it in two cuts should have about 90 thousandths we're gonna give this old Michitoya a try I'm not used to using these Alright, this is 802, 802, so we got about 94, we'll do a 45, let me, uh, let's, we're going to slow the feed right now, I'm going to take 45, let's see what kind of finish we get. I 
I ain't had any good cutting oil smoked up in here a little while, so you know you got to keep the fragrance going in the machine shop, right? Okay, that's actually really smooth. Leave a nice finish there. It's cut nice and straight. That's 756. And that's 756 there, so. Yeah, so that's going to be 40,000, so we'll back it off too, so we'll take 38. Tell you what, let's stretch the legs here. Let's, uh, all right, let's try 1,200. I usually don't like spinning it up above 700 just because it, it is a little noisy. But it's it's still nice and smooth though. Just in gears. Oh yeah. Alright, 709, so that gives me a little bit of the polish right there. That says 710 right there. So we'll hit it with some memory and a file or whatever, and that'll bring it right on down to 708. Alright, we're going to go ahead and turn this head down. Well, I'm just going to take an eighth of an inch off of it. You know, so we're supposed to be at 22, which is 866. 875 is 78, so I'm just going to dial in 125. No big deal. Uh, we're gonna hit some chamfers. That's my uh, MCHNN tool. Use a CNMG insert. All right, so our head thickness is uh, about three and a half millimeter. So let's make it about one eighth of an inch here. Okay, there we go, good enough. Maybe I'll leave that off right there. Okay. See how this does. Now what I'm gonna do, You know what I need to do? I'm going to set a zero there. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and polish that thing down the sides before I part it off. <laughs> nine on that end so we got a little more ok 
Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. 708. Fine. It's just going through a drilled hole. <laughs> How much precision do we need? Chance for that there for the file. Alright, we'll drop our tool back in there. Drop our tool back in. Alright, we're going to come back up to our zero. There, and we should be ready to part off. So I'm setting up in the mill over here on the do wall. We're going to put the two uh, drilled holes in the end. We're going to use a 1 8 drill bit. And I'm using my favorite little V blocks. These were my granddad's V blocks. Those are the steric number 271. And it comes as a pair, and they're attached with a rod that kind of keeps them together. And I've got them clamped in the vise here and just snugged up that clamp. So all I got to do. Is just push it up to the uh, the shoulder here and just snug it down and we're, we'll go ahead and find center we're going to use a, a 200 diameter edge finder and I've already done the math to uh, get to the center we need to move over uh, 454 thousandths. That's two, four, fifty-four. We'll find the edge on the end right there. I believe it was one eighth. No, I'm sorry. We're going to go 3 sixteenths from the end. So we're going to move it over 287. Right there. All right. We'll just spot it with this center drill here. Use a little bit of this anchor lube here on the drill. So I'm running it at uh, eleven fifteen. I could probably easily go up to uh, 1750. Let's just do that. We're just cutting some mild steel here. Okay. Alright, let me dust that off. I've got the other one here. And we'll repeat. So that's a nice little setup for a situation like this right here. Just drilling some tiny holes where I can easily repeat with it. So 
So we're running 1750 now. I forgot if I, I don't know if I told you. Okay, here we go. So I got to deburr them. I didn't use a chamfer tool. I'm going to use this Noga tool right here. This is that multi burr. And it's got that little countersink tool on it. It does a really nice job for stuff like that. Okay. Well, there they are. A couple little pins on a uh, Sunday afternoon. There's one of the original there. So, I mean, we got less than an hour in this screwing around with the setting up tools, messing with the camera, and stuff like that. So, I'll drop these off with Joe. It's coming up week, and uh, he'll be a happy camper.